Christmas. There you go. Well, in the meantime, let's worship. May the Lord bless us as we sing and pray and, and give him glory this morning. Blessed be God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And, and blessed be his kingdom, kingdom now and forever. forever. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you our secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you, and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. <laughs>
The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. God, our Father, whose Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, in a wonderful sacrament, has left us a memorial of his passion, grant us so to venerate the sacred mysteries of his body and blood, that we may ever perceive within ourselves the fruit of his redemption, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of Deuteronomy. <clears throat> Moses, <excuse> me, <clears throat> Moses said to the people, Lo The Lord your God will bring you into the land that you're going to occupy, and he will drive many nations out of it. As you advance, he will drive out seven nations larger and more powerful than you. The Hittites, the Girgashites, the Amorites, the Canaanites, the Prizites, the Hevitites and the Jebusites. When the Lord your God places these people in your power and you defeat them, you must put them all to death. Do not make an alliance with them or show them any mercy. Do not marry any of them. Do not let your children marry any of them because then they would lead your children away from the Lord to worship other gods. If that happens, the Lord will be angry with you and destroy you at once. So then, tear down their altars, break their sacred stones, or sacred stone pillars in pieces, cut down their symbols of the god its Asherah, and burn their idols. Do this because you belong to the Lord your God. From all the peoples on earth, he chose you to be his own special people. The Lord did not love you and choose you because you outnumbered other people. You were the smallest nation on earth. But the Lord loved you and wanted to keep the promise that he made to your ancestors. That is why he saved you by his great might and set you free from slavery to the king of Egypt. Remember that the Lord your God is the only God and that he is faithful. He will keep his covenant and show his constant love to a thousand generations of those who love him and obey his commands. But he will not hesitate to punish those who hate him. Now, now then, obey what you have been taught. Obey all the laws that I have given you today. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. God.
A reading from the first letter of St. John. Dear friends, let us love one another, because God, God, because love comes from God. Whoever loves is a child of God and knows God. Whoever does not love does not know God, for God is love. And God showed his love for us by sending his only Son into the world so that we may might have life through him. This is what love is. It is, it is not that we have loved God, but that he loved us and sent his Son to be the means by which our sins are forgiven. <coughs> Dear friends, if this is how God loved us, then we should love one another. No one has ever seen God. But if we love one another, God lives in union with us, and his love is made perfect in us. We are sure that we live in union with God, and that he lives in union with us, but because he has given us his spirit. And we have seen and tell others that the Father sent his Son to be the Savior of the world. If we declare that Jesus is the Son of God, we live in union with God, and God lives in union with us. And we ourselves know and believe the love which God has for us. God is love, and those who live in love live in union with God, and God lives in union with them. Love is made perfect in us in order that we may have the courage, in order that we may have courage on judgment day, and we will have it because our life in this world is the same as Christ. There is no fear in love. Perfect love drives out all fear. So then, love has not been made perfect in anyone who is afraid, because fear has to do with punishment. We love because God first loved us. If we say we love God but hate others, we are liars. For we cannot love God who whom we have not seen, if we do not love others whom we have seen. The command that Christ has given us is this. <coughs> Whoever loves God must love others also. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to, to God. God. I invite you to stand as you read.
The Lord be with you. And also with you. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to St. Matthew. Glory to you, Lord Christ. The people in the towns where Jesus had performed most of his miracles did not turn from their sins, so he reproached those towns. How terrible it will be for you, Chorazin. How terrible for you too, Bethsaida. If the miracles which were performed in you had been performed in Tyre and Sidon, the people there would have long ago put on sackcloth and sprinkled ashes on themselves to show that they had turned from their sins. I assure you that on the judgment day, God will show more mercy to the people of Tyre and Sidon than to you. And as for you, Capernaum, did you want to lift yourself up to heaven? You will be thrown down to hell. If the miracles which were performed in you had been performed in Sodom, it would still be in existence today. You can be sure that on Judgment Day, God will show more mercy to Sodom than to you. And at that time, Jesus said, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, I thank you because you have shown to the unlearned what you have hidden from the wise and learned. Yes, Father, this was how you were pleased to have it happen. My Father has given me all things. No one knows the Son except the Father, and no one knows the Father except the Son and those to whom the Son chooses to reveal him. Come to me. All of you who are tired from carrying heavy loads, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and put it on you and learn from me, because I am gentle and humble in spirit, and you will find rest. For the yoke I will give you is easy, and the load I will put on you is light. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Would you pray with me? Yours, O Lord, is the beauty that never fades, the glory that never withers. Yours is the truth that never falters, the love that never ceases. Instruct our hearts in the way of your beauty and glory, your truth and love, that your presence may increase within us. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I will never forget where I was and what I was doing when I heard it. I happened to be living in Detroit at the time, and I was driving from one side of the downtown area to the other to go to work, and I was listening to a broadcast of Focus on the Family with Dr. James Dobson. This is in his heyday, long before he retired, and now somebody else is the host of the show. He introduced what they were going to be talking about that day by sharing the story of when one of his children, his son, had a severe ear infection and he had to take him to the doctor and the doctor in order to examine him had to have Dr. Dobson sit in front of his son and hold his head still because the pain would be so great to put the scope in to look at his ear. And the moment that he laid his hands on his son's head and the doctor inserted the scope his son, Ryan was his name, began to cry bitterly, as any child probably would. And he looked directly into the eyes of his father, and he said, why are you doing this to me? Talk about heartbreaking. And of course, the illustration is that as a father, he had to do that in order to get the illness taken away from his son. 
I so often think about our faith and how we look at the ways in which God is allowing us to go through certain trials in order that we can grow. Trials without which we would never, ever grow. Have you ever heard the story of, of how a, 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 a butterfly learns how to fly? Actually gains the strength to fly? As a chrysalis, it has to push its way out of the cocoon. If you were to come along and slit open the cocoon and allow the butterfly to escape freely, it would never fly. I don't know if you know that or not, but it's true. And the same is true with what the Lord is sharing with us today. Today we celebrate the feast of the Sacred Heart of Jesus, that, that image of that heart that is first and foremost on fire with love for his children, for all of us. Whether we know him or don't know him, he still has a passion and a love to extend what he has done on the cross on Calvary to every human being. And that love in his heart burns, right? It burns for each and every person on earth. But we also see something else going on with that image. We see the cross that surmounts it. We see the sacrifice that had to take place. We see the crown of thorns poking into the heart, causing it to bleed. We see the, the, the pain and the anguish that Jesus had to endure in order to do for us what we could not do for ourselves. And so we talk about his sacred heart, his love for us this morning. But the scriptures that the church has given us also make us think about the flip side of that love, the kind of love that has to be tough. Not only gentle and warm and fuzzy, but tough. And so our gospel lesson this morning, Jesus is rebuking the towns where he has done miracles and where he has preached the gospel of God's kingdom. Why? Because they wanted the feel good without any of the transformation. They wanted to, do, to divorce the miracle from the truth. And you can't do that. The church has tried at different points in her history to do that very thing. And in many places in our world today, she is trying to do it as we speak. And it dies. It dies. The, the love has to be met with a desire for truth. Truth that calls forth from within us something more than our own desires. Something deeper. The question that a lot of Christians bring up is this. Why is it that God makes me go through the hard times? Why is it that I can't just enjoy the good things, the blessings that he wants to give me and just do what I want to do over here? Why do I have to go through the refiner's fire? Why do I have to be transformed? But that's not the question to ask. The question to ask is, how am I missing what God wants for me if I don't endure what Jesus endured? Let me say that again. How am I missing what God wants for me if I fail to endure what Jesus endured? So as Jesus is going about and, and preaching and performing miracles, and as people are not turning from their sins, he is trying to get their attention. And so he says what he says. How terrible it will be for you, Chorazin. How terrible for you too, Bethsaida. If the miracles which were performed in you had been performed in Tyre and Sidon, 
the people there would have long ago put on sackcloth and sprinkled ashes on themselves to show that they had turned from their sins. Tyre and Sidon are full of Gentiles, not Jews. And he went to the towns that were filled with Jewish people and he was preaching there and they did not turn. Then he goes on to say though, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, I thank you because you have shown to the unlearned what you have hidden from the wise and learned. Yes, Father, this was how you were pleased to have it happen. And then he proclaims, my Father has given me all things. No one knows the Son except the Father, and no one knows the Father except the Son, and those to whom he chooses to reveal them. So he's putting out there again the gospel of God's kingdom and what it means, and that there is a narrow gateway that we have to walk through to receive that love. But then he talks about this love again. He talks about what his passion is for you and me, why he came, and what he does for those who see not only the gift of the miracle of healing, but also the gift of the miracle of being chastised. And he says this, Come to me, all of you who are tired from carrying heavy loads. I will give you rest. How many people have we known in our lifetimes who have walked and walked and walked apart from Jesus? and have never realized that the heaviness they bore, they didn't need to bear. How many people in our own lives even now are carrying those kinds of loads? Not knowing that when Jesus calls us to be more than what we would be in our natural human state, he's not punishing us, he's freeing us. He's allowing us to be fully human, fully who we were created to be. And that's just an amazing thing. Take my yoke and put it on you and learn from me. What is his yoke? His yoke is the passion of love for humanity, for each and every individual human being. His, his yoke is also that crown of thorns, and the cross. Paul says that unless we die with Christ, we cannot be raised with Christ. Unless we suffer with Christ, we will not take a share in the victory of Christ. So what is the yoke? What does that mean for us? It means that, yes, we are just like him in this world. As we go through life and, and things are difficult, perhaps, the question isn't, Lord, how do I escape from this? It's, Lord, how do I offer you this? The faith that says that, that, that God wants us to be millionaires and have no suffering is an infantile faith. It is. Because it wants to negate the sacred heart of Jesus. It wants to do away with any hint of suffering. And Jesus is calling us to redemptive suffering, to the love that leads to that and, and to the grace that comes from it, both to us and to those around us. Because I am gentle and humble in spirit, and you will find rest. I know in my life personally that when I become complaining in my spirit when I finally realized that for the last few days or the last few weeks my prayers have centered on why Lord how come you can't make this easier for me I'm trying to do your will how come I'm having to fight all these battles to do it I know that I'm trying to negate the sacred heart of Jesus I know that I'm trying to get the blessings without the learning curve. And the only remedy for that 
The only remedy for that is to come to his gentleness and his humility and to find rest in him. The last few days, I have sat right where Pete is sitting right now. And I have come to sit in the presence of the Sacred Heart of Jesus. Just to hear him speak. <clears throat> Sometimes I've read evening prayers, I've done it. Sometimes I just sit quietly to let him speak. I'm going to tell you a story that was shared with me, and I have permission to share it with you. Father Tim was going through a particularly difficult time a couple of years ago. And he was talking with me one day about it and sharing, and he went home and he shared it with Anna. And you know, of course, Anna is paraplegic in a wheelchair. She has lost so much. The world would say that she's not blessed. And Tim unloaded his heart to Anna. And Anna turned to him and said, Jesus must love you a whole bunch to let you share in what he's letting you share in. Now, if that doesn't turn everything upside down and put it into perspective, and to understand and help us understand what this is all about, I don't know what's going to. Jesus shows us his love by welcoming us into his sufferings, into his joys, into his triumphs. The sacred heart of Jesus is the symbol of our life eternally. Sacred Heart of Jesus, you beat for us. Your passion overflows for us. It wants You want to teach us and to grow us and to make us into who we ought to be. The fullness of your intention for us even before we were being knitted together in our mother's womb. Sacred Heart of Jesus, come into our lives and beat within us. Let your passion be our passion. Let your joy be our joy. Let your sufferings be our sufferings. And let your victory be our victory. We give you honor and praise and glory. you to stand as you're able. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is, seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. 
he will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. In the power of the Holy Spirit and in union with Christ, let us pray to the Father. Govern and direct your holy church. Fill it with love and truth and grant it that unity which is your will giving us boldness to preach the gospel in all the world and to make disciples of all nations. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Encourage fully our Archbishop, Ron our Bishop, Roger and Peter our assisting bishops, and all your clergy with the knowledge and understanding that by their teaching and their lives, they may proclaim your word. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Give your people the grace to hear and receive your word, bringing forth the fruit of your spirit within them. Bring into the way of truth all who have erred and are deceived. Strengthen those who persevere. Comfort and help the faint-hearted. Raise up the fallen and finally beat down Satan under our feet. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Guide the leaders of the nation into the ways of justice and peace, and guard and strengthen those in authority over us, that they may put their trust in you and seek your honor and glory. Lord, hear us. Lord, Lord graciously hear us. Bless and keep all your people. Help and comfort the lonely, the bereaved, and the oppressed. Keep in safety those who travel and all who are in danger. Heal the sick in body and mind and provide for the homeless, the hungry, and the destitute. Show your pity on prisoners and refugees and all who are in trouble. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Hear us as we commend to you those who have died in the peace of Christ, both those who have confessed the faith publicly and those whose faith is known to you alone. Grant us with them a share in your eternal kingdom. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I give to you, my own peace I leave with you. Regard not our sins, but the faith of your church, and give to us the peace and unity of that heavenly city, where with the Father and the Holy Spirit you live and reign, now and forever. Amen.
beloved, let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. <clears throat> Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Amen. You may be seated. Coming to the Holy Table, let us remember these words. I appeal to you, brethren, by the mercies of God, to present yourselves as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your spiritual worship. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, through your goodness we have this bread to offer, which earth has given and human hands have made. It will become for us the bread of heaven. Blessed, Blessed be God, God forever. forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, through your goodness we have this wine to offer, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become for us the cup of salvation. Blessed, Blessed be God, God forever. forever. Receive, O oh Lord, these gifts presented by your people for the work of your church. Amen. Amen. But you to stand as you're able as we return our thanks to the Lord. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, all creatures here below. Praise Him, above the heavenly host. Praise Father, Son, and Lift up your hearts. We, we lift, lift them to, to the Lord. Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It, it is right to give him thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, through Jesus Christ our Lord. For our sins he was lifted high upon the cross that he might draw the whole world to himself and by his suffering and death, he became the source of eternal salvation for all who put their trust in him. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven who forever sing this hymn to proclaim 
the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy and gracious Father, in your infinite love, you made us for yourself. And when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you, in your mercy, sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ, Christ has died. Christ, Christ is risen. Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Blessed Mary and Blessed Martha of Bethany, all your saints, into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ. By him, and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. <coughs> and now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our, our Father, Father, who art in heaven, heaven hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia, Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him that takes away the sins of the world. 
Lord, I am not worthy that you should come under my roof, but speak the word only, and my soul shall be healed. Beloved, the gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving.
Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. May God the Father who desires that no one should be lost strengthen you to stand in his love. Amen. May God the Son who loves us with the shedding of his blood keep you in the embrace of his sacred heart. Amen. Amen. May God the Holy Spirit who pours the love of God into our hearts fill you with the gift of joyful gratitude. Amen. Amen. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Mass is ended. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God.